Hello and welcome techies. I am Sambhav here. This is the eighth part of data type in which we are going to talk about JSON data type in detail. In today's video, we are going to talk about general data types and overview and then we will talk about JSON data type. Before jumping into data type, JSON data type, we will also talk about what is the structure of JSON files, how do they look like and some JSON syntax rules. We will also compare JSON data type versus JSON B data type and we will perform some query to understand how JSON data types basically works and how can we query a table containing a JSON data type column. We will deal with all these things with some practical demo. As you know, we have already discussed few of the general data types marked in red, which is like Boolean, numeric, character, date time, and UUID. In case you have not watched my previous videos on SQL, please go ahead and check them out. I will leave the link in the description for you. So now let's get started with the JSON data type. Now before we talk about JSON data type, let us understand what a JSON file is. So JSON basically stands for, it's an abbreviation for JavaScript object notation. So you see J-S-O-N, it stands for JavaScript object notation. Now when you open a file, a JSON file, it would appear in the first instance as a text file. You would the JSON file will basically look at look like a basic text file but they have a different format and syntax that's why I mentioned it's a plain text written in JavaScript object notations and whenever you come across your JSON files you will always see an extension dot JSON for example let's say if you open it if you have a text file so the extension is dot txt if you have docs file dot doc right if you have an xml file right dot xml similarly the json files will have an extension called as dot json now what is the use of json file json files are popularly used for transmitting data from a web server to the client that means from web applications now let's say for example you're looking at any particular website let's say for example you're shopping any e-commerce website so you open the website right now on the website that there is no data the data is actually stored in the back end in some table in RDBMS assume so whenever you're trying to looking or finding out some information on your website that information is actually pulled out from the back end which is your RDBMS table say in this example and the data is transferred to the application right so this transfer of data can be easily done in the form of JSON that is why JSON is very, very popular for transmitting data from the server to the client. Now, let's talk more about JSON and understand what is a JSON. Now, first of all, let us look at a JSON file and we will try to understand the syntax rules to, uh, for the JSON. Now, consider I have taken on the left hand side, you would see I have taken a sample JSON file, which looks like this. And these are the pointers which you should know about the JSON. This is nothing but the syntax rules of JSON. So first and the foremost thing is that you should know the JSON files, the value stored in the JSON file is always in the form of key value pair. For example, you can see here we have an ID. This is a key and the corresponding value is A, which is a value. Similarly, we have style and we have a roller. So style is nothing but a key and roller is nothing but a value height is a key and three is a value so json always stores the value in the form of key value pair first and the foremost thing always remember json will store the value in the form of key value pairs now let us look at some of the syntax rule the first rule says all the data in the file must be surrounded by curly braces if you're representing it as an object and square bracket if it is an array now what is the meaning of this so you would notice if you look at this particular json file now there are two objects mainly this is the first object and this is the second object so id and you see basically there are two rows of data if you are trying to compare it with the let's say uh, excel file or let's say csv file right so the say the point says all the data in the file must be surrounded by a curly braces so you see here all the values from starting from id style height width 
till dimensions, everything is packed in a curly braces, right? And square bracket is used to represent array. So you can see here for location, we have used a square bracket. This is just a representation of an array. So if we want to say, hey, location has got multiple values, array means similar types of multiple values, right? If you want to represent such kind of values, we use square bracket. Similarly, you can see here location in this case, again, it has got an array value. That's why we have enclosed it in a square bracket. Second very important point is that single quotes are not allowed. In JSON, single quotes are not allowed. You would notice all the values are enclosed in double quotes ID, whether it is key or value or whatever it is, you would notice that all these values are enclosed in double quotes. They are not enclosed in single quotes. So we do not use single quotes in JSON files. The third one, the third point says, the key in JSON must be unique and must be in double quotes. Now, when I talk about key, so we have already discussed that the JSON file stores the data in the form of key value pair. So ID is a key, A is the value, style is a key, roller is a value. Now, the point says that the key must be unique. We cannot have a duplicate key. So this is one set of records starting from ID to dimension. So in this, within this, there should not be any duplicate values. Now, this is a second object. This is a second object. Now, this second object may have similar values, no problem. But within a single object, within a single object, you should not have duplicate keys. That's your third point. Number of numbers must not be enclosed in double quotes. Otherwise, they will be treated as string. That means, let's say, for example, here you see values as three, three. These are numeric values. Numeric values should not be enclosed in double quotes if you want to represent them as numeric value. Number should not be enclosed in double quotes in case if you want to represent or use them as a number. The moment you push them inside double quotes, then those numbers will be treated as a string value then those numbers will be treated as a string value. So you should be very mindful about this, that numbers must not be enclosed in double quotes, otherwise they will be treated as a string value. They can also have null values and null values should not be enclosed in double quotes. I have clearly mentioned here, null values should not be enclosed in double quotes. In our example, we do not have any null value, but if you want to represent, let's say, bay here for four, the values for, suppose we do not have a value for bay that means we want to showcase it as a missing value or the data is unknown then we would definitely mark it to be as a null value but that null value should not be enclosed in quotes the moment you enclose the null in quotes again it will start treating to treating it to be as a character value just like numeric value right what we discussed earlier for the boolean values if you notice here there are only two possible values true and false boolean values can only be true and false you should not use any other representation of boolean values like t f uppercase yes no on off it would not accept so json data type whenever you want to represent a boolean value it should be true or false right you cannot have any other value each key value pair must be terminated with a comma except for the last item so you see this is the first key value pair this is a second key value pair. This is a third key value pair, fourth key value pair. And each one of them are separated with a comma. Each one of them are separated with a comma. Each key value pair must be separated with a comma, except the last one, except the last one. So once the moment you stop adding comma at the end, it means it is the end of it. So you should not add comma only for the last value. For rest of the things you must include. So each key value pair is separated by the comma except the last one. The last point is a, a particular object inside an array must be terminated by a comma too. That means I'm talking about this array location. So you see here in location, we have stored a value as an array, right? There are two values, 0 0.3 and 0. Or let's say for example, in this location, we have two values four comma zero so there are two values so each array value individual array value must also be separated by a comma so these are the important pointers for us to understand how the json file looks like and what are the characteristics or the properties of the json file these are basically the syntax tool of json file 
this we have already discussed what a JSON file is. We have already talked about each JSON file will store the value in the form of key value pair. So in this example, you can see name, age and car is nothing but a key. Whereas John 30 and null, you see here the null value, it is not enclosed in quotes, right? Because I wanted to represent it as a null. It, the moment I push this null inside a quote, then it will be treated as a string value. Right. So always remember JSON files are in the form of key value pairs. We have already discussed several other points for the syntax of the JSON. So I hope you would have got a fair idea of what a JSON file is. What is the use of JSON file? How does it looks like and what are the syntax rules of JSON file? Now, since JSON files are really important and it is commonly used in the industry, PostgreSQL has built in support for to handle JSON file and it provides a great range of functions, operators and complete indexing support, right? That's what a JSON file does. So PostgreSQL has a built in support for JSON, complete JSON. So you do not have to import an external module to deal with that, right? Under the hood, when you, when you are creating a table and storing the value, under the hood, the JSON file type is actually a text data type. We have already discussed the text data type in our string value where we discussed about uh, var, char, char and text data type. So under the hood, JSON data type is typically a text data type. There is another data type in JSON which is called as JSON B, which is used to implement the binary version of the JSON data type. JSON B is a separate data type which is used to implement the binary version of the JSON data type. Now when we talk about what 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 is JSON data JSON B data type JSON B data type stands for JavaScript object notation binary. The only thing is that the binary is attached binary is at the end. So that's what a JSON B indicates JavaScript object notation binary file and it is used to store JSON file in the binary format. The only purpose of JSON B is to store the JSON file in a form of binary format. That's it. Now, sometimes in the interview, a common question which is being asked is what is the difference between JSON and JSON B? So I had stated the difference between JSON and JSON B. So JSON data type stores the exact copy of input text in JSON file. That means uh, whatever data you are inputting in this particular form, it will store exactly in the same format. Whereas the JSON B will store the same data by converting it into a binary code. The only difference between this JSON and JSON B in terms of storage is that JSON will store the exact copy of the data the way you are storing the JSON file, right? If I'm so this will be stored as it is. But if I want to store the same thing as a JSON B that is a binary format, so while storing what PostgreSQL will do is it will convert this file into a binary format. Let's look at the second point. JSON preserves the original formatting like the white spaces as well as the ordering of the key. So when the meaning is the format in which you are inserting, right? So space, everything it will maintain. The, your JSON file will maintain. JSON preserves the original formatting like white spaces as well as the ordering of the key. Whereas JSON B does not preserve the original formatting of the text like the white spaces and, and the ordering of the key. The reason is because when we are storing a JSON value into a column which has been defined as JSON B, it will be, it will be converted into a binary code. So all this original formatting is lost. The third point is JSON processes input faster than JSON processes input faster than JSON B as there is no conversion involved in it. It means when you're storing the JSON file, when you're loading some values into a JSON column, a let's say we have a column which is defined to be as JSON, that would be comparatively faster. The storage is faster. Whereas in JSON B, the storage the process of storing will be slightly slower. The reason is because at the time of storage, the file needs to be converted to binary file. So JSONB converts the JSON data into binary form. So it has a slightly slower input due to binary conversion overhead because while it is storing the data, whatever data you are inputting, it has to convert that into a binary file. So there is an overhead, conversion overhead because of which the inputting or processing of input becomes little slower for JSON B. JSON data 
does not take much disk space as the JSON data is stored as it is. So this is also beneficial in terms of storage space. Whereas uh, JSON B file, that is a binary for format, will consume more space compared to JSON data type. Now, the main reason for us to use a JSON B data type, because till now you might have seen, okay, JSON is JSON data type is comparatively better than JSON B. Then why do we have to use it? The main reason is because of this point. The processing processing function needs to be reparsed. So every time you process the data which is stored in the form of JSON, your function will be reparsed in each of the execution when the input text is in the JSON data type. Hence the processing is slow here. Definitely the processing is slow because of the re each time your executions, each time of your executions, reparsing takes place. Whereas in JSON B, it is comparatively faster to process the data, so no reparsing is needed. Hence, it is a faster processing. Now, don't get confused with this point number uh, three, which says input is faster and here processing is slower. Now, there are two things. When I'm loading the data into my table in the form of JSON, that process is faster, right? That process is faster. But when I'm loading the data into JSON B data type, the, that process is slow because for loading the data, there is an overhead of conversion, converting the JSON file to binary format. But once it is loaded, once it is loaded, if you're trying to execute some query, you're trying to process your data, JSON will be slow. JSON data type would be slow because it needs to be reparsed in each execution where it is not, that is not the case in JSON B data type. So you see here, no reparsing is needed. So comparatively, the processing is faster. JSON does not support indexing like JSON B. JSON B has extensive support on indexing. This is again an advantage on JSON B. If in JSON, if there exists more than one key for the given value, all the key value will be preserved, right? So duplicate keys basically, so they will be preserved. Whereas in JSON B does not support or preserve duplicate objects key, right? In case of duplicate, only the last key value pair is preserved, right? Only the last key value is preserved. So this you should, this, this, Difference is important from interview point of view also where we talk about JSON and JSON B data type. You should always remember this. This is a common question asked in the interview. Now, in order to understand the JSON data type, let us dive into some practicals, right? Now, let's first create a simple table. Let's first create a simple table. <clears throat> so I'm creating a table here with a JSON column. So this table, the name of the table is JSON table one, which has got two column, ID and customer info. ID, I am defining it to be as a serial data type. So I don't have to insert the value every time. Auto increment facility is enabled here. So automatically the value will be inserted for the ID column. For customer info, I am, ins I am creating it to be as a JSON data type. So let me execute this query and let's see what happens. So my query has executed successfully. Let me look into the table. Of course, there is no data in the table because I have just created the table, but I have not inserted into it. But if you look at the table, minutely you will see there are two columns. One is ID, which is of integer data type. And the second column is customer info, which is of JSON data type. So this is how you can create your columns with JSON data type. All you need to do is you have to define a column name and then define the data type, JSON data type. Similarly, if you want to create a table uh, with JSON B data type, that also can be done. But before that, let us insert some values into our JSON table one. Now, before we insert some values into our JSON table, uh, let us understand what is that we are going to insert. Now, let me bring this up here. Now, I am having a column called as customer info. Now inside customer info, I am trying to insert this value. Now let us understand what this value is. So as you know that JSON will accept the value in the form of key value pair, right? So here customer is a key and lily bush is a value. Item is a key and this entire piece is a value, right? Now this is the first row. I'm only talking about the first row. Now, if you look at this JSON data type, 
right there are two objects the first object is customer and the second object is items the first object is customer and the second object is items that is what it shows here so customer the name is lily bush now in items you see there are two sub items one is the product and another is the quantity item contains nested value so you can consider this to be like a parent and child relationship so item is a parent which has got two childs one is product and another one is quantity so that i have included in the flower bracket curly braces to state that these are they are having item is having a, item is a parent which has two child product and quantity right this structure you should remember so this is the first row which we are going to insert so objects are two that means the first row has got two objects one is customer one is item so one is customer and one is item and item has considering it this to be as a parent which has got two child which is product and quantity the product value is diaper and the quantity value is 24 so this is the first row now if let's look at the data which we are inserting so you see here I am inserting this to be as a first row right the same thing customer lily bush items which has got two childs product and quantity the product value is diaper and quantity value is 24 so this is a first row similarly I am inserting second row third fourth fifth sixth row so there are six rows I am inserting so now I hope you know what is what kind of value we are actually inserting into customer info so let me execute this query my query has executed successfully now let's quickly look at the data now you see my data has been inserted so there are six rows for ID which is a serial data type so automatically the value has been inserted with an increment of one which we have already discussed earlier what a serial data type is in case you have not watched that video please go ahead and check them out you will also understand why the serial data type is showing here as an integer we have already discussed all those things now talking about customer info so customer info is nothing but a json data type and these are the values which we have inserted so this is a json value this is a json value these are all json values right and we have inserted six rows so i hope this much is clear what we are actually doing now after inserting the value you might be thinking how can we query the data now before we get into querying of data let me also show you in one example where how you can create a table with json b data type so it's very much uh, similar there is nothing different in, difference in that as you can see here we have defined a column name with a data type json here i am defining a column name with a data type as json b so the table name is json b table one now let me execute this so query has executed successfully and now let's look into the data it's now a uh, table sorry since you have not inserted any data so this is how it will look like now you see the difference that customer info has been defined as a json b data type we will not be inserting any values into this json b uh, table one to save some time we have already inserted value for the json table one and we'll try to use that for query now when we look at this particular table which is your uh, json table let me bring this table once here now you might notice that they do not look like a common uh, column they are not just a similar column i mean just like uh, other columns which you have seen for the different data types like cat var cat text integer they looks little different you see there is a flower bracket let me zoom in a little bit for us to see so there's a flower bracket curly braces key value pairs again there is a key which is a value in the form of an array which is a child of items so let us see how can we query this table how can we query this table now there are two native operators you should remember one is hyphen with greater than symbol you can say arrow with one head and arrow with double head arrow with single head and arrow with double head are in general used to query the table these two uh, these two are nothing but an operators which are used to query your json columns these two operators are only mostly used to query your json operators so here you see what what is the difference between these two arrow with single head and arrow with double head arrow with single head will return json object field by key whereas 
arrow with double head returns a JSON field object by text. Now what is the meaning of it? I will show you shortly. In a practical demo, I, we will discuss all these things. Single head, double head, how does the data look like? What is the difference? Everything we will see. Okay. Now let us start querying the table. So I have brought this here, the first row, so that we can understand what we are actually querying. The first question says, can you please fetch customer info from the JSON table? So as you know that this consists of two columns, our table consists of two columns, customer ID and customer info. So the first question says, fetch only the customer info. So all we need to do is, we will just use a select statement and inside that we will define the customer info, which is a column name. So let me pull this up, easy peasy, yeah. So you see, we have got this second column, which is customer info column. So you can individually pull out the column as and when required, right? That is the example here. The second question says, fetch all the customers from the JSON table. Now understand this question very clearly. It says, fetch all the customers from the JSON table. Now let us try to understand this question from this diagram. Customers. What is the column name here? The column name is customer info. We know that the column name is customer info. Here, the column name is customer info. Inside this customer info, which is a column name, contains two objects. One is called as customer. Another object is called as items. We are asked to fetch this customer information. From the customer info, we need to extract only the customer, that means first level of value of the customer. That is what is being asked. Fetch all the customer from the JSON table. I want to fetch all the customers. So here our customer is Lily Bush. We have inserted six rows. So let us see how we can do that. Now, <clears throat> sorry. If you look at the query, what we are doing is select statement. We will define the column name. Inside the column name, as you know, I have said, we are using two types of native operator. One arrow with single head, arrow with double head, right? This is nothing but hyphen greater than symbol, hyphen greater than and greater than symbol. So in our query, we are saying, hey, okay, we are looking for customer info. Inside that, we are looking for the first item, the first object, see here, customer info. It contains two objects. One is customer, one is items. So I am looking for first object, the first object which is customer. So I will define customer info, single head and customer, the name of the object. And I'm using an alias name as customer from the JSON table. So let me execute this piece of code. Let me execute this piece of code. Now, the moment I execute this, one important thing for us to understand here is we have got the customer, which is nothing but an alias name. So from the customer info column, we have fetched customers. We have fetched customer and the names are this Lily Bush, John Williams, Paul Smith, Aaron Mark, Amy Williams, Mark Clark, Mary Clark, sorry, right? Now, one important thing for you to notice here is we have used an arrow with single head, which is returning single, single is single arrow head is returning JSON field by key. That means in layman term, I can say it is returning as a JSON object itself. So single arrow key will return you the result in the form of JSON itself. It will return you the result in the JSON itself you would notice that these values are enclosed in double quotes. These values are included, closed in double quotes. Now, in the next example, I'm trying to fetch the same information from customer info. I'm trying to fetch customer as customer itself, but now I'm using arrow with double head, hyphen greater than, greater than, arrow with double head. Let's say this is arrow with double head. Now, what is the difference? This will also fetch the same information this will also fetch the same information. The only difference is that now it will fetch it as a text value. It will fetch it as a text value because of this operator, because of this arrow with double, hyphen, double head operator. If I execute this, you will see it is fetching it as a text. So now you would have understood the difference between arrow with single head and arrow with double head. Arrow with single head, 
will return me the value in the form of JSON data itself. Whereas arrow with double head will return me the same value, but in a text format, but in a text format, right? I hope this is clear. Now let's <clears throat> look into the third question. The third question is very much similar. It says, hey, fetch all the items from the JSON table. So if I look at my customer info, column in which the first ob the first object was customer but the second object is items the second object is item so the question says hey can you please fetch all the items from the json table now when it is saying all the items means item has got two child product and quantity that means i should be getting product and quantity for all the rows this is the value which i am showing here is only for the first row but I should be getting the items value for all the row and this item which is a parent consists of two child which is product and quantity. So again the query remains the same. Select the column name. Inside the column name I am looking for items the object. Column name is referring the object items with single head means this will return me the result in the form of JSON whereas the second query which is having a double arrow with double head will return me as a text that is the only difference now let us execute and let's see how the data looks like so here I am executing the first query customer info items with single head so definitely this is going to return me in the form of JSON so as you can see here those values are returned in JSON flower bracket and quotes and all those things right the data type is JSON. This is important for us to know. Now in the second situation, we are trying to use a double head, which means I want to access the same information, but not as a JSON data type, but as a text data type. So let me execute this piece of query. Let me execute it. You see here now the value is now the data type shown here is text. So now I hope you would have understood the difference between what is the difference between a single arrowhead and a double arrowhead when we are dealing with JSON files. This is also a very, very important question. It might be asked in your interview. So please be mindful about it. Now, let's look into our fourth question. Now, the fourth question says, hey, can you fetch all the customers and their items from the table. That means I want these two objects separately. That means I want these two objects in two different columns. I want customer uh, column as well as the item column. So it is pretty straightforward what we have discussed earlier. Customer info. Here I'm using double head because I want the customer, assume I want the customer information to be in the text format, but I want customer information for items to be in the uh, in a JSON format. So let me execute this here. Let me execute this. This is a query. So le let me just execute this piece of code. So it will fetch me both customer. So we have Lily Bush, William and all and their items. What is a corresponding item? If you want, you can play around with this uh, double arrow. Let me say, let's say I want to have it as a, uh, let's say customer, I want to have it as a JSON. Initially, I, this, this result shows it as a text, but now I want to have this as a text. But items, I want to have it as a JSON, right? Sorry, text. Items, I want to have it as a text, which was initially pulled to as a JSON. So if now if I execute this piece of query, you would see it has customers has been extracted as a JSON, whereas item has been extracted as a text, right? I hope this symbol is very much clear to you. Right now, let's look into the next question. The next question, the fifth question says, please fetch all the product from the items from the JSON table. Now, we have to drill down one more level. We will have to drill down one more level down. Means from the items, I have to pull only the product. Now, you know that in this example, item has got two childs. One is product and one is quantity one is product and one is quantity but my question says please fetch only the product in the previous example when we were executing this we were fetching the entire value see we were fetching for items we were fetching both product and quantity product and quantity product and quantity right but now the question says hey can you please fetch only product only product so how can we do that it is pretty simple so in this i am pulling up the customer information and oh sorry not this question yeah 
So here I'm pulling up the items. That means I'm pulling this. So I'm saying customer info as items. So one of my column would be items, which will contain both the values, product and quantity, right? Parent, it will contain both the values, product and quantity. Second column, which I'm pulling up is customer info, items, and inside item, again, I am giving a one more level pointer that means i want to point it to one more level down so i'm using the same arrow key with a double head and i'm saying okay i want so how can i access this by using the key so this is product is the key so i will use the key name product and i will say as item product from the json table i hope this piece is clear to you right this piece is clear to you so what i'm doing column name the i object name column name which is customer info items is nothing but the object name which I am referring from the column name now from these items again I am referring the sub object which is your product which is your product so it is like from customer column I am drilling down to the first of one of the object called items inside the items I am looking for product inside the items I'm looking for a product so this is actually how we query a JSON table this is how we actually query a JSON table in fact we will have a separate session of uh, uh, querying JSON table in detail there are a lot of you know amazing functions for JSON and since JSON is popularly used data type in the industry so we will have a separate session where we will discuss exhaustively only about uh, you know JSON columns and how to query how to apply function loop arrays and everything we will talk but since we will we are limiting here ourselves to basic queries because we are discussing only about the data types now let's pull out this information now let me execute this query now you see items so we got product so this items had two child's product and quantity so we are getting but out of that we are only pulling up the product value which is diaper value of the child value of the child see diaper we are only pulling up one of the value so i hope this syntax is clear to you column name object name and then the key right whatever the uh, elements it has the child right the key name right now next question let us try to apply some filter let us try to apply some filter based on this so the, the question says filter out the customer who purchased diaper from json table one now let me show you the table uh, yes let me show you the table let's look at the entire table one so this is our data id customer info now customer info has got customer items item has got two child product and quantity and the value of the product is diaper value of the product is toy car value of the product is diaper toy car and all now the question says find out the customers who purchased a diaper now what is that we are supposed to do we have to filter the data based on the second object items on one of the child product whose value is diaper what is that we are supposed to do we are supposed to filter the data based on the second object which is item we are supposed to filter the data there are two objects so we are from the customer info table we are supposed to fetch the data based on items that is one of the objects second object based on that we will have to filter the data based on product whose value is diaper so what is the syntax to do that very straightforward same thing what we have discussed earlier customer info so i want to get my customer name also so i have used customer info the column name and the object name as customer as customer so this will give me all the customer values like lily bush paul smith and so on then we have customer info so customer info items from the column customer info i want to pull out all the data of the item so it will give me both product and quantity the third column is product info items and product that is the same thing what we discussed earlier right column name then we are drilling down into object name then inside that object we are pulling up the uh, uh, child value which is product right this part we have discussed from json table now for applying the where condition that means we will have to boil down till product will have to in order to apply the condition diaper see in order to apply the condition for the product which is, which is equal to diaper i'll have to drill down up to product up to product this level of nesting has to be sorted here 
right? Then only I can apply this condition diaper. So what I'm going to do is I will use the same thing because this will help me reach to the up to the product from customer to customer to in for customer info from customer info to items from customer items to product right and then I will apply a condition is equal to diaper is equal to diaper now let me execute this query and let's see what it returns same thing I have used items products items product and diaper so let me execute this and let's see what is the result yeah we got it so customer name Lily Bush, Paul Smith, Amy Williams. So you see, I have used a single arrow head. That's why it is returning me as a JSON file. So this is a JSON object, right? Similarly, you see here, I am getting this product as a text. Double head has been used and it is returning me and it is satisfying this condition as diapers because there are other values, other value also in this particular uh, table, right? So this is how you can apply filter, right? Now let's get into the one more question, one more practical session, one more question to filter out the data, which will help us understand it more. Filter out the customer whose item quantity is greater than or equal to 20 or let it be just greater than not equal to also. Let it be just greater than leave the equal to just you'll have to add an equal to symbol. That's it from the JSON table. Now, now what is a condition we have to apply here in this case the condition which we are applying here is look at the condition which we are applying here so here we have to follow the customer info inside the customer info we have to look into our tables so customer info right so inside customer info we have two objects customer and item so we have customer object customer info column inside that we have items inside items I need to access my quantity right and after accessing quantity I'll have to apply a condition greater than 20 the quantity is 24 let's let me just look at the table first let me just look at the table first so here you can see we have this table where we have customer info which in which we have two objects customer and items customer and items customer and items now in items there are two childs product and quantity product and quantity so we will have to filter our data based on the second child which is quantity right that is a condition quantity is greater than okay just leave this equal to we will only do it for greater than okay <clears throat> greater than 20 so that means quantity should be greater than 20 so first we will have to reach this value so what I'm doing select customer info because I just want to know uh, customer names which is nothing but customer so Lily Bush Williams Paul Smith Aaron Mask Amy Williams Mark Mary Clay, Clark all these things I would get it as a customer second column I will be getting as customer info items so I will be getting items 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 that will be the second column which will contain the value like product diaper product diaper product toy car product diaper product toy car along with the quantity values right third one I am accessing is the quantity that means from the customer info I am drilling down to a second item which is your second object which is your items and inside object I'm trying to fetch quantity that's why I have used from customer info I need to look into the items object inside the items object I'm looking for the child quantity right I will use the same thing to apply condition greater than 20 greater than 20 now if I execute this piece of query it will return me the value see greater than 20 24 22 23 all these things we have got it right this is your quantity value so now this is like a basic querying of your JSON table but there are a lot of new a lot of you know uh, things which we have we can do with the JSON table since we were talking only about uh, JSON data type so I have restricted my uh, discussion for up to basic querying of the JSON table itself but of course in my upcoming session we will discuss JSON tables in detail and we will see a lot of feature of JSON you will see how powerful JSON is so thank you so much for your time and patience I hope you have enjoyed learning from this session in case if you like what I am teaching Please don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Thank you so much for your time and patience. You have a great day ahead. Thank you.